e to the x plus one right here. And we are going to take a look at this in the next time. Timo just came in. <laughs> I'm looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. It's going to be a fucking great journey once again of absolutely beautiful integration. And last time we did this exact problem boy right here. And in the end, I made a little comment about how we can actually interpret this as nothing but gamma function of two times the Riemann zeta function of two. Okay? So I hope you guys remember this. And this inspirational uh, multiplication thing right here, <laughs> what, whatever you want to call it, is going to give rise to an idea to solve our boy for today. This integral. If you see, if we plug 2 into here, where um, s being equal to 2, we are actually going to get x up there in the numerator. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be quite a fun journey and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. So what I said last time is actually the, the inspiration for actually solving this thing right here. And you see, right here we had the gamma function involved. So why not start off with the gamma function, the integral representation and let's see what we get. Okay, and I'm going to do so much gamma function stuff and next time it's going to be absolutely fucking nice. Infinite product, it's, it's going to be good here as fuck. I should chin up my boys. So we're going to start off with gamma function of s. Okay, let's, let's put it gamma of s just because of this s right here. And we have defined it. No, we have not defined it. We have derived it using Feynman integration and Laplace transforms as nothing but x to the s minus 1 power times e to the negative x dx. Okay, this is our gamma function. And maybe you already see we have our x to the s minus 1 power right here. So we're actually pretty close to being done, my boys. But before we can go any further, I would like to parameterize this gamma function right here. Let's put a little index k down here. And let's say we don't have this expression, but we have e to the negative k times x right here. Okay, this is going to help us get our zeta function. Now, naturally, I would like to well, introduce a little substitution to actually get our gamma function back be because this right here is not our gamma function because of the factor k. But if we would set, for example, let some t be equal to k minus x, uh, k times x, then we actually get our gamma function back in the process. Meaning we are going to get that, well, x is nothing but if our k is not equal to zero, we don't want that. x is then t over k and we can differentiate both sides to get that dx is nothing but, well, 1 over k times dt. And now we can plug the stuff into here and see what we get. So if we let the limits approach 0 and infinity respectively, well, it's just going to stay how they were before. Then we have x to the s minus 1 power. But x is nothing but this right here. So we are going to get t to the s minus 1 power. Then this is 1 over k. That's k to the negative 1 power. So this exponent is just going to turn signs. So this is nothing but k to the 1 minus s <laughs> power. And also we have e to the negative t. Also, we have that, um, oh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, no, that's okay, that's okay. Also, we have that dx is nothing but 1 over k times dt. I don't know why I thought that was incorrect. I, I don't know what I thought there actually. 1 over k and this k to the first power is going to cancel out and why not bring this 1 over k to the s power to the outside. Maybe you can already see where this is going. This is so fucking cool. So this 1 over k to the s power times the integral from 0 to infinity of well t to the s minus 1 power e to the negative t integrated with respect to t. And I want you guys to remember something. What the fuck is this right here? Well, that's just our good old gamma function. This is the integral representation that we had up here originally. So that's nothing but 1 over k to the s power times, well, our gamma function with respect to s. Here in this Putnam problem, 
we actually got that we had theta of two right here. I want you guys to remember what a Riemann theta function actually is. Theta of s is nothing but the sum running from, well, k equals to one to infinity of one over k to the s power. That's the Riemann theta function. Okay. <laughs> Why not sum both sides from k equals to one to infinity? Okay, if we would just sum this side of the metal, then we would actually get the Riemann theta function of s times gamma of s. Okay, so let's do this. On this side, we are going to get the sum from k equals to one to infinity of this chunk, which is nothing but theta of s times gamma of s. But also, we had that this is nothing but the sum from one to infinity of this integral, our gamma k of s. So this is nothing but the sum running from k equals to one to infinity of, well, integral from zero to infinity, x to the s minus one power, e to the negative k times x, integrated with respect to x. And as always, it just happens too fucking often and I really don't give a shit at this point anymore. We have to testify that we can actually interchange those limits right here. Well, our gamma function is strictly fucking positive, my boys. That's why we can Fubini this shit. Meaning we can interchange the integral sign and our infinity boy to actually get that our Riemann theta of s times the gamma function of s is now nothing but, well, our integral from zero to infinity. Then we have x to the s minus one power times this infinity boy from one to infinity e to the negative k times x integrated with respect to x. Also by our exponent rules, we can kind of track this k to the outside to get e to the negative x to the kth power. Okay, <laughs> then we're going to continue from here. We kind of have our geometric series right here, but with the only difference that our geometric series actually runs from zero. Meaning we have to get our zero of member, which is e to the zero of power, which is one to this whole thing in order for us to get the geometric series. So this thing right here is actually nothing but, okay, what we can do, we can add a zero to this thing because, well, if you have an apple and you don't place another apple next to it, then you still have the one apple that you had before. So we can add a one and subtract a one right again to get back what we originally had up here. So negative one plus one plus this sum is nothing but, well, plus the sum running from k being equal to zero to infinity of, well, e to the negative x to the kth power. But this thing right here is actually our geometric series. So this is nothing but negative one. And well, by our geometric series, we have derived this sheet before. And if it's in our radius of convergent, convergence, which is this, because if you plug zero into here, that's one. And if you plug infinity into here, basically if you take the limit as e to negative x approaches infinity, we are going to get zero. So this works out quite nicely. We're going to get plus one over one minus e to the negative x. We can advance this negative one a bit, this fraction, by one minus e to the negative x over one minus e to the negative x. We are going to get, okay, we are still just dealing with this infinite series right here. So this is going to turn the signs around. So e to the negative x minus one, then adding this one to it over one minus e to the negative x. Now, actually, we can cancel those two out. And either you factor out the e to the negative x on both terms, or you advance this fraction by e to the x over e to the x. Whatever you do, it's going to turn out to be one over e to the x minus one. Meaning overall, this integral right here is going to turn into the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s minus one power over e to the x minus one dx. Holy shit, my boys, that's it. We are already done. That was way faster than I expected. So there are two ways. Either you can backwards engineer this way of solving the given integral right here. You are just going to algebraic manipulate this integral just like I did with this one right here. That's actually the, the first way I came up with solving this integral. And well, after finding out that it's going to vary to gamma, 
of two times theta of two, I actually came up with the idea to just work from here. So it does make perfect sense. I hope it does make perfect sense to you guys. And here, yeah, this right here is basically it. And someone in the comments last time actually suggested to take a look at a variant e to the x plus one right here. And we're going to take a look at this in the next time. Timo just came in. <laughs> I'm looking at him. <laughs> that means we are done with the video. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't run into the room when I actually still recorded the maths here. Yeah, like I said, we're going to take a look at this absolutely nice variant next time. It's not as easy as you might think. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe my comment channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those boyish t-shirts I created, those infinity boy t-shirts. And you can also support the channel on Patreon if you want. Love you guys, appreciate ya. See ya. Das Ding verfolgt der Akiro.